Hi guys, before we kick off the video proper, I just want to tell you, uh, the other day I did a video on the QBZ95 and I got the numbers wrong. I really apologize for it. I'm sorry if it inconvenienced anyone. I did a lot of testing on the range for this video particularly, and I realized that the other day I was comparing the wrong data when I was getting the rate of fire basically for the AR. So I really, really apologize for that. But there's a lot of stuff to go through here. And I know that some people will be upset with some of the results and the findings and what I think is the best AR. And just because I can tap fire out this bloke with an M416, they say I can do it with an AKM as well. That's great. You can probably do it with an AKM as well. God knows we've all done it in situations where we didn't have an M416. We had an AK 30 rounds and a four times. You don't have a choice. This is a guide as to what is the best at doing it. Okay. It's not the definitive, you can't do it with anything else. So please take it with a grain of salt and um, bear with me because there are an awful lot of numbers and characteristics that I've got to run through here. But, we, but we're going to grade out every single AR in the game on a scale of one to 10. And I hope you enjoy it. Lots of work went into it. Uh, yeah, roll the tape. Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough to be doing it too, today's term of the day is context. We're going to try and put every AR in the game into context. Now, the context that I generally have when I'm dealing with an AR uh, is the secondary weapon. Uh, this is the gun that I want to run in my long-range slot, a Car 98K, an AWM, an M24. Heaven help us, even an M14, a Mini-14, or a, an SKS, or an SLR. And if I'm doing that, then... The slot that I'm using with the AR has to cover off on a lot of different characteristics and situations and engagement types. And that's why I'm going to be grading the ARs out based on three main areas. I'm going to be talking about stopping power, just the pure raw numbers, the stopping power. I'm going to be talking about the handling of the weapon, how it actually aims, fires and shoots, and the versatility of the weapon across all those types of engagements. So uh, let's do it. So... I've put together a pretty definitive guide of the best ARs, their stopping power, the numbers, the science behind it. Now, to get those numbers, I worked really, really hard, and I was helped immensely by the patron community. I went into training rooms with those guys, and we did a whole lot of testing, and I'll get to that. And I got on the range, and I did a whole lot of testing. And basically, what I did was I fired a bunch of clips, and I broke down the video, and I checked... On, in Final Cut Pro in my editing software, uh, the length of time that it took to fire off an entire clip, then I divided it by the number of bullets fired, and I, uh, I even went through and had guns with just 30 bullets in the clip, and I timed the exact time when the button was pressed to the time when the gun went red, and when it went red, we know it's completely out of ammunition, and that is when it's fired a clip, and then we divide it by that number, and we get the exact rate of fire which is great, and it might be a bit dry, but it's important you understand how I came up with these numbers. Now, this is the next part. This is the PUBG PC mobile, uh, PUBG PC damage model. Uh, there's gradiated damage all over the place. So if you get shot in the, just above the nutsack, it's 49 damage with a, an AKM. If you get shot dead center between the nipples, it's 53.9. And even in the shoulder blades, it's a different number. So I got a whole bunch of patron guys in a training room, and I'm going to give you a clue at what this looks like. It's, it's controlled chaos. Basically, I would get everyone together, and we would do one shot each into another target, and then you had to die. And you couldn't just die by killing each other because that would ruin the data. So I'd shoot one in the chest, and then I'd go and die, and someone would shoot me in the lower abdomen, and then they'd go and die, and we'd get the exact number when you finished. So you knew how much damage you had as a baseline. And it just turned out that the entire chest area was the one hitbox. And it didn't matter where you shot someone or uh, when you shot them just above the nutsack or just between the nipples. It was all the one number of damage. And I want to particularly thank Lanky, uh, Stinky and Willows today who spent 45 minutes with me trying to find a grozer in training rooms so we could get the exact number of that 7.62 round, which is 47 damage per chest shot. Anyway, so where do we go from there? Let's take the M416, for example. Now, this is a spreadsheet. I'm only going to show you this for like 10 seconds, but this is basically where I've collated all the data. I've taken the rate of fire. I've got the time to kill a level two vest theoretically, and then the real adjusted time to kill a level two vest. And I'll talk to you about that. It's very, very important. Uh, let's roll a little bit of tape while I go through this. The crazy idea is that the 416, the Scarrell, the QBZ, the Org, they all take exactly the same amount of time to kill a level 2 vest target 
theoretically. That's because we know the rate of fire, we know the damage they do to a level two vest, which is 24. And we know how long it takes to clear someone with 100 hit points with that rate of fire. That's not the truth though. The actual truth is adjusted up. It takes them 0.45425 seconds to actually kill a level two vest wearing target. That's because that first number is the number it takes to get through 100 hit points at a set rate of fire. But you can't fire half a bullet or a third of a bullet. You can only fire a whole round or no round at all. So it's gonna take you five rounds and it takes you five rounds at 0.085 seconds to clear a level two chest vest wearing target. See how crazy this is when I started doing the numbers. And this is where we really start getting nuts because there is something weird going on with the M16A4. Now this is how we do the testing. You get 30 rounds. You fire those rounds off. Now that shows you how long it takes to fire 30 rounds. I mean, that's pretty conclusive. And if I slow that down, you'll see something really, really crazy. And that is, watch how long it takes to get five rounds fired in the M16A4. Now this is in slow motion, okay? And it takes five rounds of 5.56 to kill someone. It takes 0.19 seconds. Now I want you to think about that because it's absolutely mind-blowing. And it's one of the reasons why I did an M16A4 video where I just ran the M16A4 for like a week and I freaking shredded everything. Big caveat, you've got to smash that button very, very fast, but it takes 0.19 to 0.2 seconds to fire five rounds of M16A4 shells. That's, that's easily, easily the fastest time to kill a level two vest wearing target in the game right now uh, with the ARs. The Grozer is number two at 0.296, and then the AKM and the M416 uh, all are at 0.42 to 0.425. There's... It's really insane. So in terms of just flat out firepower, it goes M16A4, Groza, and then everything else is pretty much in the same field. Now we start getting to gun handling. And I wanna talk a little bit also about the myth of the AKM. Uh, I think there's recency bias with the idea that the AKM just clears fights and clears targets. And I think one of the reasons for that is that it's the most readily available AR in the game. It's very, very, very easy to find an AKM. So you actually come up against more people who are running AKMs in the game. But for all that, the numbers don't bear out the idea that the AKM actually clears targets faster than any other AR. They're, they're so negligible, the differences between an AKM, a, a QBZ-95 and an M416. So let's rate these guns in terms of firepower and give them a score out of 10. Now, number one on the list has to be the M16A4. Uh, just in terms of raw stopping power, this is the number one AR in the game. But it fires a 5.56 round, which is, for all intents and purposes, a much lighter round than the 7.62, and that means that it does less damage with a single shot but it doesn't ever fire a single shot in burst mode. So it's very, very rare that you will find this shell hitting just once. For all that though, it's a 10. It's a 10, it's a 10, it's a 10. The stopping power on the burst is freaking ridiculous. Absolutely out of this world insane. Number two has to be the Grozer. Uh, 762 round, which does 47 damage. It fires them at an insane rate. It is the fastest firing automatic weapon uh, out of all the ARs. It is it's got a rate of fire of 0 0.074 uh, in terms, that's how long it takes it to actually fire a shell out, 0 0.074 seconds, a shell every 0 0.074 seconds, which is about, I don't know, 12% faster than the M416, the QBZ, the SCAR-L, and the AUG. In terms of firepower, you've got to give that uh, a nine out of 10 because it's right there with the M416. It's slightly above it, the time to kill a level two vest target in actuality, for the Grozer is 0.296 seconds. Then we have the AKM. The AKM is number three on the list for firepower, quite simply because 
It's an eight, and the reason it gets an eight is it's got a 47 damage round. Now, if you're going to get a gun that takes as long to kill a target, uh, pretty much as an M416, but it does it with a bigger round, then I'd rather take the bigger round in terms of firepower, because the bigger round will clear targets on low hit points. And then in terms of firepower, you have your M416, your AUG, your QBZ, your SCAR-L, they are all getting a seven. They're exactly the same, right? There's no way around it. The M16A4's firepower is outrageous. I have a hard time grading the M16A4 with the other ARs, though, because putting it to the test is very, very difficult. And that's where we get to gun handling. And the gun handling of the weapons is paramount. Obviously, there's no point having the ability to drop a nuclear megaton worth of damage if you can't throw it in the ocean from, you know, when you're standing on the beach. And this is the reason why the AKM and the Grozer and the M16A4, for all their strength and power, really do fall behind the uh, rest of the pack when it comes to gun handling. Now, there's three ways that I really judge the ARs. Uh, I want to talk about the stopping power, then I want to talk about the, the handling of the weapon itself, gun handling, and then I want to talk about the versatility of the weapon. And the AKM, its gun handling is, is pretty rough. It struggles at long ranges. At long ranges, the AKM is not that great. But you know what? You can mitigate that by actually running other weapons to cover that off. And you can see the loadout I've got here is a QBZ and an AKM. So when they come up to this kind of range, uh, I just switch over to my 7.62 Beast and start dealing with people in a very, very up close and personal fashion. And that's where the AKM is valuable. But for all that, you still have to mark it down for its gun handling. And a big part of that is because the AKM just can't run the attachments that the 556 weapons can run. And this brings us into the biggest part of the conversation. How these weapons grade out based on the availability of certain attachments. Now, if you're running an AKM, it's a very, very simple equation. You want to run a compensator and a red dot. Those are really the, the absolute best outcomes for an AKM. Because at these kind of ranges, you can see here, the AKM is a treasure trove of ass busting. It really is very, very good. But you can only run a compensator on it. If you look at the M416, for instance, you can run a muzzle attachment like a compensator. You can run a grip, a vertical foregrip, or a horizontal, an angled foregrip, or a thumb grip, or a half grip, or a light grip. And then you can also run a tactical stock. Now, I do not have the data mine numbers for the attachments. I just don't have them. But I can tell you from looking at the PC attachments, which I'm going to bring up on the screen in a second, and my own personal experience in the game, that running an M416 or a QBZ or a SCAR-L is a massive advantage in terms of actually getting your shots to hit the target, particularly once you start moving out beyond the ranges of 25 to 30 meters. So let's have a chat about the crazy stuff. Let's talk about the attachments and what they mean for you, the humans. Now, the great thing about the attachments with the 5.56 weapons is that they actually tend to accentuate the things that are already good about the guns. So the QBZ, uh, just bear with me on this. The QBZ, for instance, has a really exceptionally good horizontal recoil pattern within the first 10 to 15 rounds. It's outstanding for spraying at range. And the best grip for doing that is the half grip. I'm going to break down why that is. But you can do that with the QBZ without the half grip. If you watch this clip here, you'll see this is with a vertical foregrip on the gun. And the vertical foregrip is not the best grip, but unsighted, I'm gonna go straight down, hip fire, and drill that bloke. So when we get a gun like that, and we start putting these kind of stats on it, you understand that the gun goes through the roof in terms of gun handling versus your stock M16A4, your Grozer, your AKM, which quite simply cannot improve their gun handling to any great degree outside of putting a compensator on. This is from PUBG PC. This is data mine numbers from PUBG PC. And they represent the deviations, the, the coefficients that the 
guns received from running these particular grips and the tactical stock. And the green is good and red is bad. And you can see that the half grip is just lights out brilliant for decreasing your recoil pattern, uh, recoil multiplier and recoil uh, horizontal and vertical. So it, it improves both the pattern that the gun is likely to take, the size of it, the horizontal variance and the vertical variance. If you can put that grip and a tactical stock, say for an M416, which improves just, and a compensator, you just take a gun that already has an incredible uh, set of gun handling statistics and improves it even further. And that's where the 5.56 weapons absolutely dominate the 7.62 weapons. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot use the 7.62 weapons in various different situations. What I'm saying is that if we're being honest and we're grading these guns out of 10 on their ability to actually be effective and to have good weapon handling, then you have to put these guns at the top. I mean, you're not doing that kind of firing at 70 meters with an AKM. It just won't come off as effectively as it is there with the Scar L. So let's talk about that a little bit further and let's show a little bit more about, uh, you know, why it's so important to have, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you the, the raw stats. Now these are the PC raw stats, but basically your compensator is minus 25% to recoil pattern, minus 10% to horizontal recoil, minus 15% to vertical recoil, and minus 10% to spread base. What does that mean? It means it's a lot easier to hit the target. Now, that's a question I get all the time in my videos is, man, you didn't pick up that suppressor. And the reason I didn't pick up the suppressor is because the suppressor doesn't do what a compensator does. It makes it a lot harder to hear you hitting the target, but it doesn't make it a whole lot easier to hit the target. Couple that, say, on an M416 with a half grip, which is improving the horizontal vertical recoil and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then you put a stock on it, which is minus 10% to the animation kick, which I'm not even going to get into right now. Just forget about it. Sway is not a thing on mobile as far as I'm aware, but it is minus 20% to the recoil pattern. When you're spraying the gun, like this situation, look at this with a, an M416. I mean, that's 100 meters away on burst spray slash spray mode. And we are clearing the target. Even though he had the first shot at us, we had a shredded level three vest and he got the drop, we still cleared him because the gun handling on this weapon is just freaking ridiculous when everything gets added to it. So let's start grading them out in terms of where they sit in the pantheon of gun handling. Okay, so guys, so let's grade this out. We're gonna run this, it's very, very simple. The ability of this gun here to run a compensator, a grip of whatever nature you wish to have on it, and a tactical stock is, it's just a game breaker for this gun. It is 10 out of 10. Uh, and then I'd go 8.5 for the SCAR, the AUG, and the QBZ all in a row. I have done the, the work on these guns, and I've got to tell you, these graphics at the top don't make any sense to me. The firing speed of the scar L is meant to be its bread and butter. But I've driven, I've fired the QBZ, I've fired the scar L, I've fired the AUG on the range. They all come in at about 2.53 to 2.54 or thereabouts seconds to fire off a full 30 round clip if they are all firing at exactly the same rate of fire or within a margin of error that makes it negligible then why the hell is this org a crate drop i don't know because it does the same damage to a chest it might do better damage over distance i just couldn't check those things out there's a there's a limitation to how much time one man has so i give them all an 8.5 out of 10 for their gun handling they're low recoil, 5.56 five, rounds. They have high projectile speeds and they are able to mount multiple attachments. Two thumbs up from this guy. The, uh, you know, then seven out of 10 is your AKM uh, and your Groza and your M16A4. There's, I mean, that's where it's at. That's, that's it for me. The M16A4 particularly has fallen off in this patch because it feels like they've given it a horrible belting 
with the recoil stick. I don't understand it. What I couldn't find it in patch notes anywhere, but my anecdotal evidence is that's exactly what's going on. So there we go. We're gonna go on now and talk about versatility. Now I want to please guys, don't yell at me in the comments just because I don't agree with you. <laughs> I've done work. You do the work, and then you come back and give me an idea on why this is so. But you know, I've got a lot of numbers and spreadsheets and things that I've worked on to get these ideas. And I also have personal feel for the guns as well. Let's talk about versatility. M416 is, is the keystone here. And the reason that we made this video is to see what would you pair with that long range bomber when you've got that car 98K and you have to cover off on a lot of different engagement types. You've got to play on Miramar. You've got to play on Sanok. And you've got to play on Erangel. And you are going to have situations where, you know, the best thing you can do is go spray and pray and clear people. But you're also going to have situations where you've got to take out a knock at 250 meters that you, you know, you've got to clear that, that knock and you're tap firing with an M416 and that's a lot easier than doing it with an AK. I'm not saying you can't do it with an AK. I'm saying it's easier than doing it with an AK. But how do you quantify the difference between a 10 out of 10 and an 8 out of 10 in terms of versatility. Well, that's hard. And that's just personal experience and it's my personal opinion. So I understand in this part of the breakdown if you're going to have a go at me because really, this is where it is absolutely a personal thing. Now, the Groza is not very good at ranges of 100 meters and out, but it is lights out beautiful up close and personal and even up to say 50 meters as you're going to see in this clip. I actually don't think there's really much to be said i don't think there's another weapon that could do it better than i do it here except maybe an m16a4 and even then i'd be tap firing in this situation i wouldn't just be holding the button down like i am with the groza now that was 28 shells in two bursts we cleared two targets and they were controlled bursts and the groza shredded them and then it shredded that bloke now is that a versatile weapon well, reasonably, it certainly seemed to do quite well there at about 50 meters, uh, maybe 60 on one of those shots. But how is it really stretching out? And the further away you get, how valuable does the Groza become? And I think that's why in terms of versatility, if you want to pair something up with a Car 98K or an AWM, you're really looking at a 5.56 weapon. The 5.56 weapons are absolutely brilliant for this. Where would I... Here's the other thing. Like on Miramar, the Groza is next to useless. The AKM is terrible. <laughs> on Sanok, well, there's a lot more of these engagements which are much, much closer because there's so much foliage and rocks around. You actually have these occasions and there's, you know, like Paradise Resort and Boot Camp. There's these occasions where you get to go constantly within 15 to 20 meters of another target. And in those situations, well... I agree, the stopping power of the Groza or the uh, AKM or the M16A4 would be paramount. But we're talking about overall. We're not talking about specific instances. And if we're going overall, we've got to grade them out across all the maps at once. And to do that, um, I mean, let's just stop putting it off. <laughs> let's, let's have a little chat about where we rate them. I mean, look at that. It's just, it's... A, it's just a nuts out thing, isn't it? It's crazy. All right, let's rate these things off in terms of versatility. Their ability to engage at multiple ranges, like this. I mean, that's full spray. That is a full spray weapon, just with a three times scope. You're not doing that with an AKM. It just doesn't happen. So versatility, it's very straightforward. 10 out of 10 for the M416. It has very, very high shell velocity, which is excellent for long range sniping and single tap firing. It has outstanding uh, rate of fire, which means you can spray it pretty easily up close and personal out to ranges of like 50 meters, 75 meters, 100 meters uh, with a three or four times scope. Once you get used to the gun and, and you learn how to handle it um, and it pairs beautifully with a sniper rifle, a single shot rifle, you can influence these numbers based on the secondary weapon you have. If you're running a Mini-14, you can kind of get away with a Groza or an AKM on certain maps. But we're not going into those specifics here. We're just going to run out with the numbers. And it's 10 out of 10 for the M416. I would have the Scar-L, the Org, and the QBZ 
at about eight out of 10. Uh, I'd have the M16A4 at about seven. The AKM I'd have at about seven and the Grozer I'd have at about seven. I know those numbers might seem odd to you because I have just been telling you that these guns are better than the other ones, but quantifying that number, is it 10% better? Yeah, I'd say 10% is a fair, fair amount. Is it 20% better? Yeah, probably not. Maybe somewhere in between. And I think one point of difference is enough to to put that number in perspective. And I think the M416 is literally that much better. You can run a vertical foregrip on the M416, have that outstanding tap fire ability, or even a lightweight grip, which is excellent for that kind of range, and still then put the tack stock on and get a reduction to all the good stuff. So, I mean, the M416, it can just cover off on so much more than the other weapons can. That tactical stock is such a bonus. Uh, it's rate of fire. Everything else is grand about it. So, where do we go from here? Well, let's grade them out completely and combine all three scores and see where we end up. And then when we got all the scores, I'm going to tell you what I like anyway <laughs> and why I like them. Because although the scores are a great way of giving them a value and then being able to apply that value uh, to the game and deciding what you're going to pick up and why you're going to pick it up, it would be remiss of me not to just put in a little bit of a curveball, like the finish of the sixth sense or something. Uh, anyway, here we go. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Right. Well, let's start from the bottom on up with all the suspense of a Hollywood thriller. Uh... At 23.5 total, we have the scar -L, the Org, and the QBZ. All these guns have just incredibly common characteristics. Um, not incredibly common characteristics. They all have very, very similar characteristics. Then we have, at 24, the M16A4. Now, these are just the numbers, right? This is where we get from rating them straight out of the bat. At 25, uh, at 24 also, the AKM. It would not surprise you, I guess, if you knew that the two most common weapons in Season 2, or Season 1, in fact, were the AKM and the M16A4. I think that carried over to Season 2 as well. They're the most readily available ARs there are, and that's something we really haven't gone into. But, I, I mean, the unobtainability of the Grozer versus an AKM is obviously something that's got to be considered. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot less people, hopefully, will be leaving a Grozer in a crate after after this. I've had nothing but good experiences with the Grozer. And if you get a Grozer in a crate, it's an opportunity to get a weapon that is basically top of the line in terms of stopping power uh, outside of the very, very quirky M16A4. So then we get uh, from there, we go up to the Grozer at 25, which is pretty straightforward and, and, and common. It's, it's just insane, okay? Heavy recoil. Uh, difficult to control at mid to far range, says the uh, says the tooltip up the top, which is, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you can't put a you can't put a compensator on this gun, which is a big issue. You can only really put a silencer on it, and that's rough because, um, yeah, it it needs a compensator. But up close and personal with a silencer, it's just a monster, absolute monster. Um, and from there, obviously up the top, in terms of rating, we have the M416, this bad boy right here. This is the puppy that really does uh, bring home the bacon in terms of all the statistics, gun handling, everything else. It's it's numero uno. And I think it goes without saying, I mean, I'd be a fair, fairly idiotic kind of call to say that this isn't the best AR overall. For certain situations, yeah. The Grozer will be better, or the M16A4 will be better, or even the QBZ can be better at times. Grading them out in terms of personal preference, what I would take. Well, for me, number one would be the QBZ. I'm going to tell you why. This is a game. I love playing the game. I play it with my mates, and it feels immersive, and I enjoy it immensely. It is action-packed, and it's a giggle fest, and there's banter, and there's lots of chat, and... I want something that improves that sense, that sense of dynamic gameplay. And I love the noise this thing makes. And I love spraying with this thing. And those are two things that I adore doing. So that's why I love the QBZ the most at the moment. Number two for me, uh, in terms of my personal preference, and this isn't overall, this is just my personal preference. I'm not saying that it is the best weapon at all. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. 
Uh, number two for me is the AKM. It's iconic. I played Counter-Strike as a, a kid. I played the beta for Counter-Strike before the thing was, you know, available. I downloaded it on a freaking dial-up modem and I played it when there was 2D models when you drop a weapon and there was only two maps and uh, it was buggy as all hell. But I learned that the AKM was just a fickle mistress that could destroy souls as well as create a joyous and loving environment. And the AKM really can still do that. Uh, it's so readily available as a world drop. It's turned so many battles on its head for me because basically if you've got a low hit point target and you can get two rounds into them quick, they're dead. They're, they're just dead. Even with a level three vest, you can still do enough damage to clear people when they're low and they're hurt and clearing knocks and all that kind of thing. So then the AKM. Then after that, obviously, I'd go M416 every day of the week. Um, my play style is very much a single target long range sniper and then an automatic weapon to go with it and pair with it. And the best case scenario for that is this gun here. It, it wins all the time. The QBZ is only available on Sanok, and it's perfectly suited to Sanok. It's good at that 100 meter spray range. And there's so much of that action on Sanok that you, you know, it was tailor made for that map. This is the perfect AR for Miramar. It is the perfect AR for Erangel. And it is also very, very good and only just slightly behind, in my opinion, the QBZ for Sanok. So take that with uh, whatever grain of salt you wanted, but there you go. That's my opinion, personal opinion. Uh, then I'd go uh, Groza and M16A4. They'd both be in a line for me, and the Scarrell is right there as well. After that, it is pretty much anything I pick up. This is the most maligned gun for no bloody reason, and I, I, I've got a little bit to, to say about this. I came out of crates the other day in a game that I'm going to post uh, a video of with... Some of it's actually in here with Funky Monkey and uh, Retro Jojo, uh, some of my patron buddies. And I came out with nine kills with the Scarrell. And it it was absolutely superb in the clutch. It was so solid in terms of... It's basically the QBZ, but for for uh, Aaron Gale and, and Miramar, which is a very, very good weapon. And I'm going to run it a whole hell of a lot more. Uh, that first... 10 shots is just on point, okay? That first 10 shots is absolutely beautiful. And I don't like the org a whole hell of a lot, but there you go. Um, that's just because I think I have an antithesis for it being a crate drop when I, I don't see it as being any better than this gun here, the Scarrell, or not particularly better. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. I, I just want to finish off with one final little addendum. I know this has been a long video and I appreciate it if you've stuck all the way through it, but the M16A4 rates out very well in terms of numbers, but it is so, so difficult to harness that it's, for most of the player base, it's just not viable. I've done videos on it. I've obviously shown that I enjoy it and the claw method allows me to utilize it. But even then, at the same time, it's not nearly as efficient of just, as just holding down a button and working the numbers. On PC, it's crazy how much more you can get away with being able to tap fire weapons. Uh, but on mobile, tap firing really, really hard on a, a PC or a, an iPad without having, you know, trigger buttons or something, it really affects the way the game goes for you. So you're going to have to make your own decisions at the end of the day. But I think this is a really good guide for people just based purely and simply upon the ratings overall of the weapons themselves. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking the videos. Happy to take comments downstairs in the uh, in the comment section. But if you want to be a clown and just yell and scream, I'm not going to respond to you. Uh, look after yourselves. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.